everybody, I'm Stacy with Stacy's Organizing and Decorating for Life. I'm here to help you organize your thoughts and decorate your perspectives. So today our topic is going to be about grief, you know, and then the next thing we're going to talk about is panic in the pandemic. That was offered to me from my friend Joanne. She said, Stacy, can you please help? There's another variant. So we're going to talk about that because as things have changed in these adjustments and adaptations, we think that when we, you know, have adjusted and adapted, here comes another fear because it's, you know, it's the way that trauma works, right? Is whether you're experiencing trauma of death or trauma of fear of the pandemic and the fear of, you know, security and this uncertainty, you know. So we're going to talk about that. But before we get started, I want to welcome you back. If you visit this channel every week and listen to these videos or watch these videos every week, I love and appreciate you, and I thank you for all of your support. So thank you very much. Whether you support me by, you know, just watching the videos, liking and sharing, subscribing, and I'm not monetized because I don't go with an algorithm. I go with the energy or the vibration, the, the, what I'm hearing, what I'm feeling, what I'm sensing. So that oftentimes doesn't reach the monetary level because there's a lot of, you know, negativity being transformed and this channel is about lifting the positive vibe trying to help people survive these crazy times so i love and appreciate you and i thank you very much for being a part of that because we need to be the change we want to see right and focus more on the change we want to see rather than the negativity of what we're being told and i'm not saying that's not happening it's just how you know we are all healers and then I want to welcome you if you're new to this channel. What I, I want you to know is that I'm not a doctor, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist or a scientist. Sometimes I may offer up what I learn about those things because if it helped me, I think it might help you too. What I am is a life coach and I have a webpage called stacyforlife.com and on this webpage, I write a monthly blog, so I invite you to check that out. But also there's a description of the services that I provide as a life coach. Really, it's about the desire for healing and healthy relationships and development of spiritual and soul consciousness. So if you or anyone you know need help in that area, then please feel free once again to check out, check me out, stacyforlife.com. So let's get into our topic today. First, I was thinking of grief because even as I got on you know, the computer this morning, I saw another tragedy of a friend from way, way back that they just lost their wife in a tragedy and their son was you know struggling and having issues and i relate with that because i lost my son in a tragedy and my daughter was struggling and relating with issues so that can be overwhelming i think that the good thing for me was was where i found faith is that i didn't lose both of my kids you know i i, I could have and i lost them i lost one and it's one one is bad enough and this is the thing is that sometimes when we lose a loved one we don't want to live right Suicide might not be what we're thinking, but we lose our desire to live. You know, we don't know where we're going to go. So that's why one of the reasons that grief is part of this video is I know that there's many people, I've had other people tell me, you know, they've learned love hurts. I've had other people tell me, you know, about the grief that they're experiencing. We have the empty chair, you know, that's that's been around for a long time because in humility we aren't the first to lose a loved one and unfortunately we're not the last. But it does seem personal, but it's not when we do. And that's the transformation. When we talk about healing, it doesn't mean that healing means that we're going to just forget, you know, like we do on our scars on our body. Scars are still there to remind us sometimes. And so this is the scars too. So I posted something about the scars the other day. And I want to just a quote. So I'm going to share that with you. This quote says, the scars you can't see are the hardest to heal. And that quote is by Astrid Alaude. So many people are walking around with these scars right now. Some people may want to call them triggers, you know, because whether or not we're thinking about having lost a loved one is that sometimes people are on edge at these trying times, you know. And it's hard not to receive that transference of anger, you know, but we don't know what another person is dealing with. It may be those scars that they don't even know that are coming up for them at this time is because fear, you know, 
I've listened to people this week talk about fear of losing loved ones, that they're struggling with cancers, they're struggling with the same things that we had even before the pandemic. But I do believe with the pandemic, everything has been intensified. We can look at it from two sides. We can look at it as like we're damned and, and you know, it's a, the mode of survival. And I've got another quote for that, <clears throat> that you're going to go in that. Or we can look at it as an evolution. You know, why is this happening? Because we can't stop it. It's like the first step in our recovery <clears throat> that we're powerless and that we're unmanageable. You know, this has made our life unmanageable. Many people have lost jobs. My friend Joanne told me, you know, the prices are going up, but the wages are not, you know. And so there's people struggling and stressing now with the Christmas coming. And, you know, I, I believe that really Christmas, you know, that... <laughs> that the meaning has gotten lost in the materialism through the years, and I know many of you do too. So we're going to talk about, you know, that through the three steps. I'm going to offer you three steps in this video that maybe we can bring comfort to ourselves and others as a part of humanity. Because, you know, that's, that's the thing is that we're all part of humanity, is that we got into this survival mode, and when people tend to go into survival mode or be programmed into survival mode, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. You know, that's what I, the saying I used to hear as a child. We have to give up those thoughts and understand that through the loss, we receive a grace. You know, and that grace can provide us some magic because we do have our will to survive and our will to live. But it doesn't mean that we have to be selfish with it because we learn through that grace how to give. And then the second, you know, is that we get to have a peace. But the, and that peace lies in mystery through patience. And so, and through that, and waiting on that mystery and having faith, maybe through prayer, that's how I receive that, because I do have a faith and a power greater than myself that's huge and expansive. It's beyond all the religions. I'm not talking about religion. The faith that I have is bigger than religion. It's not contained in a book or a box. You know, it's just huge, and it's helped me through all these life on life's terms. So, and then we go to the last one, because it's in that practice and development that you all hear me talk about, but it can be spiritual. You know, it's because it's as within is so without. You know, whatever we have, it's going to be a reflection. So the third, the third is, you know, for me, it's my higher power. I'm okay with saying God, but I know as a child that I had a problem with God. You know, because they kept saying he, 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 and then there were pictures, you know, that we had of God with beards and stuff, and everything was pretty masculine, and I was thinking, well, if I'm in the image and likeness, then what happened here, you know? So, boops. So, I never saw God like that. So, there's goddess, you know, and for me, that shows up as Mary, because she did lose a child, too. But there's all these other goddesses. Also, Aphrodite with the passion and spirituality is expansive as the sea. You know, I think that oftentimes as I'm out there looking at the sea, there's an Aphrodite in me. You know, so it's being able to realize, to look at our similarities in these archetypes, in these angels, you know, the archangels, the guides, all of this, that we're a part of all of that. When we Once we realize our expansion, see survival mode, in the dog eat dog and it causes us to constrict and to go into that but if we can realize how expansive we are we have more faith so that's why I'm going to offer the prayer up here in just a minute but before I do that I just want to remind you that all of this is having a ripple a ripple effect you know and we get to choose the ripple effect that we want to be like I said we can do that through faith and spirituality and whoever you believe and however you believe it doesn't mean that one is more worthy to receive, okay? So, as we look at the different ways, let me read my notes as I do sometimes. There are people dying, and many are dealing with the empty chair from the past couple of years, and there have been more. Not all from COVID. There are people dealing with loss from addiction, suicide, and other illnesses because people aren't knowing how to cope with all of this because, as I said, Things get better, then they get worse, and it's more intense than it's ever been. So it's really hard on people. So these are the things that we can do to help people, to help ourselves. Because when we, when we expel hate, we're also receiving hate. Because remember, whatever we give out, that as without, in, so without. Whatever we put out, we're going to receive back. 
So we need to reject hate. Before I, I you know, get into that, when we're talking about healing and grief, like I, I dare say to anybody who's grieving to say uh, prayers for your healing. Now, some people are probably okay with that, but for me, when somebody would say prayers for your healing, it meant that they thought that this was going to go away. And the thing is, is love never dies. So I'm not sure that grief does because my son was named after a Calvin that, you know, I never knew that my great grandma was grieving for even at, you know, 96 years old, though she lived a very faith filled life. She had never forgotten her baby. So we don't forget. Healing isn't about forgetting, just like our scars that I talked about. So healing doesn't mean that the pain will not exist. It just means that we don't resist and allow the transformation. So that's what I do in these candle prayers that we're going to do here in a minute, is that it's all about transformation, okay? Because I don't think that I told you about the third one, but once we can go through the grace and the magic and go through the peace and the mystery, we get to the power of the source, our God, the universe, the all, the divine, you know, and when we get to that, that has the power, and that's where the miracles are created, and it's not something that we can will, it has to come in time. So, we reject hate, people, especially when stressed out, as many people are, and fear, even if you can't help them. You can send them good energy and vibes, but keep your energy clear. So I'm not saying to subject yourself to people with low vibes and low energy, but to show up and smile. You know, share your hope with them for just a minute. You don't have to take their despair on. If you can't help them, you don't have to hurt them, right? Like the saying goes. Bragging. I'm seeing a lot of this. And, you know, even myself, I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, you know, is... It's good that you're having these experiences and that I'm happy for you, but with so many people struggling right now and with our humanness, we tend to compare. So it's like bragging. Share your joy with friends and people who can share your joy and enthusiasm. Be mindful that some people are suffering, struggling, and that bragging can bring on pain or animosity. Sometimes, and when we've been programmed to compare, I'm not saying to water yourself down but share with those who care. Okay, and then the third one is keep it simple. Gift giving, be thoughtful, but not obsessive, not grandiose. Gifts from the heart are the best at this time. As many are dealing with loss and being thoughtful is very important. Sometimes if you buy people big gifts and they can't afford that, then that makes them feel less than, you know, so it's you know about our intentions and motivations. If people admire something that we have, if we can give that to them, if we are through with the energy with it then and, and can extend that energy, the joy that we had with that, that we can extend it to somebody else, I think that that's cool. That's what I do sometimes. I'll give crystals away sometimes or my little things that, you know, have helped me. I've taken actual jackets off, you know, that I've got to wear plenty and then give them to somebody else. I've given shirts, you know literally, you know, is that we can do these things if we have plenty, you know, and I, I've been able to do that, and I think, I'm so thankful that I have been able to do that, you know, and know the importance of positively affirming your words and faith and reasonable desires, knowing it for yourself and knowing it for others, you know, is being able to give back, to receive compliments and give back, because even that in itself is a gift, because sometimes people don't realize their their beauty. So being able to offer them grace, peace, and power, we can do that to one another. That's what humanity is about. So let go of worry, pray it out, and wait. Focus on what you want. That's what I keep hearing is patience. Even I sometimes have an issue with patience. So let's get into the prayer part now. You know, so I thank you so much as we extend into that, and I pray that you'll stay with me. And I pray to, before we get started, like I said, there's Mary. My second candle is representative of Jesus and that transformation. The transformation takes that peace, patience, and into the mystery because we don't know how we're going to transform. Is that we set a goal sometimes, but we don't know all the steps in between. So that's where the practice and development comes in. But through that practice and development, we build these strength muscles, strength of trust, strength of faith, strength of hope, you know, and then we're able to receive that power of the miracles manifesting in our lives, okay? 
So here we go. So before we get started, I want to explain why I pray with the candles. I do this morning and night, and night, and then I pray throughout the day for those who ask for prayer because I may not remember exactly at night. I used to pray, get, trying to get on my knees, but I became uncomfortable and and impatient with that, and so I would just, you know, they they I wasn't focused on my prayer. And then I used to pray in the bed, but I would fall asleep. <clears throat> so that didn't work either. So I pray with the candles because I'm not going to fall asleep with candles burning. But also fire is representative of alchemy and that transformation that I'm talking about. You know, that diamonds are under fire, silver is under fire. So many things that bring beauty to this life are exposed to the fire. Fire can be a purifier. So as water can be a purifier. There's, you know, all of the elements. You know, the earth purifies you know, and it needs to be purified now. You know, we're working on it. We're working on bringing things into better consciousness. So that, too, can be our source. Our God is consciousness. I believe that that's really what it is. It's about that connectingness, the consciousness. So I just wanted to explain that to you is that, you know, I loved it with the representation of fire, fire of our desires. You know, when we pray, oftentimes it's our desire. Some people are taught not to pray for themselves, but we, like I say, we want to pray for what we want to see, you know, and that we are extension of that. I even believe that our prayer heals our past, present, and future is in our DNA. Okay? Father, Mother, God, I thank you for the prayer in this space. God, thank you for being with us. Universe, energy, source, the divine. Cosmic consciousness, divine intelligence. Body, heart, soul, and mind. Thank you for blessing us on this travel today. For being with us as we sit and pray. Mother Mary, I thank you for your nurturing, your grace and your magic in this place, for letting us see the wonders of this world through pain, through grief, through everything. We pray for our relationships with our children, that they be healed, for our parents. We thank you for our own mothers and skin, but we thank you for Mother Earth, Mother Nature, and Luna, and all the ways that the feminine shows up in our life. We know that the feminine can show up in masculine too, so we're not being anything. We know that everything and all are deeply connected, and we pray for those connections to heal, whether on this side or the other side. We pray to be real in what we feel and not try to have false ideas. So thank you. And at this time, I thank Brenda for this rosary and pray for her healing all the time. And I say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. The fruit of our womb. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Bless us now in this hour and the hour of our death. Pray for us now. I, I'm not real comfortable praying on camera, y'all. This is really an intimate thing, so please excuse me when I mess up. But we just, I just want to raise the intentions. And then next I move to Jesus as I paid acknowledgement to Jesus. And mind you that while I'm not Christian and Jesus didn't say he was either, I thank you for the role that Jesus played in our lives as brother, teacher, Master Metaphysician, Divine Alchemist, Guide, Lover, Friend on the other side, this and the other side. So we thank you, Jesus, for the principles and teachings that you gave us, that we can act as you would have us act and behave as you taught us to be a part of spirit and material, that we're in our human skins and sometimes we don't know what we're doing. And so the power of being able to say we don't know so that we can learn and so we can grow. We thank you, Jesus, for our families and our friends on this side and the other side, past, present, and future, as they are all blessings and set in the seed of our soul as we continue to live, love, learn, and grow. 
I thank you so much personally for my recovery each and every day that I wake up sober knowing what I did yesterday and knowing what I have planned to do today. Not being driven by another force that doesn't guide me or that's not intentional and not conscious. So I thank you. But I do pray for those out there struggling in and outside of the rooms. I pray that they make it back in if they're out there soon. I pray for those that, they're, that are in and that you'll guide us in our recovery. And can you continue teaching us how to live? And thank you for everything that we get to see, hear, and give. Because these are all gifts of this life, the freedom that we have. So we thank you as that freedom extends into our spirituality, being able to continue to learn from all the way showers and guides, past, present, and future, the mystics, the angels, the philosophers, all those that share their wisdom with us. We pray that we too can learn and trust in the power greater than ourself. Thank you. Thank you so much for showing up as, as in us and through us in that consciousness, in that belief in the peace and the mystery through the patience. Thank you. So then I snuff out that candle too, but I'm not snuffing them out yet. And then we move on to the third candle, which is God, the source, the all, whoever you perceive that to be. And we thank God for God is the supreme power that shows up in Mary, that shows up in Jesus, that shows up in Buddha, that shows up in Ganesha, Lakshmi, Aphrodite, all the goddesses and goddesses, whoever you perceive that to be, sometimes the Bhagavan, you know, the oneness that we all remember that we are one, that we all have that God seed in us as we've begun, that we're able to celebrate others and their differences as well as celebrate our difference from everyone else, that we don't have to compare ourselves, but that we get to share ourselves, that it doesn't mean speaking over or under anyone else, but being able to realize that we too are divine that we have our peace of mind and we come here with this intention and this purpose and if we're breathing that's what we're for we're not worthless so we thank you God for helping us and guiding our day and being with our intentions as we go and I pray specifically for my fairy goddess mother who was able to heal me and to help me grow and I pray to be able to do that and to be that in others to, you know, for the healing sessions, the clients, past, present, and future, that the healing still extends within them and has that ripple effect. The clients, past, present, and future. I pray for them too. You know, and I thank God for showing up through me, working through my hands and my words in the healing sessions through your divine direction for working through me in insightful videos that help others to continue to grow, for being with me in inspired writing that's most inviting, that it's your words, your spirit, your actions, words, actions, and deeds speaking in and through me, plant those seeds, that I may be, I am, in the words of Jesus, because we are what we say we are, as you are in us. So I am a mystical healer, in a magical way, I give miraculous service and for magnificent pay. And I thank you, God, for working in and through me in these divine synchronicities, serendipities along the way. I pray to be awake, alive, alert, and aware that I'm able to see those who, want, who need me to share. So I thank you for allowing me to get out of my own way and to start this day. And I pray that this video helps others. Thank you, God, Goddess, for all these fathers, sons, daughters, and mothers, and our healing as we just are transforming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so it is. Amen. So usually I'd snuff the candles out as I say the prayer, but now they're going out. I also had an incense lit. So, I thank you for your time. It's very valuable. It's very important, as you are very valuable and important, too. So remember this in this holiday season, that things aren't happening to you. 
they're happening through you. You, they're happening through you. Things aren't happening to you; they're happening through you. And I even have a friend that says they're not just happening to you and through you, but for you. You know, when we get to see things that way, change our thoughts and perspectives, we can grow. We're open. You know. So I hope that you'll be mindful of the seeds you sow. Next week's video is going to be about mindfulness. So I want to thank you again very much, and I hope that you'll have a blessed rest of your week. And just, you know, those three things will help you. Just remember, you know, to, to be kind, basically, is all that it comes down to. You know, to remember that there are those suffering and struggling at this time, and stressed suffering, struggling, and stressed. And uh, I wish you much peace and love, and may you be blessed. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful week. Bye.